This week's podcast is sponsored by the Bowers & Wilkins 800 Series Diamond Range. This is not just another speaker range. Each new generation of 800 Series Diamond is a landmark event for Bowers & Wilkins. This is the brand's benchmark, its icon, the most advanced range of loudspeakers its engineering team knows how to make. Experience the sound for yourself at authorised dealers or learn more at BowersWilkins.com. Hello and welcome to the AV Forums podcast, streaming live on Wednesday the 13th of October. And joining me on this edition is Ed Selly. It's so stimulating being your hat. And Steve Withers. Only forever, not long at all. Uh, welcome back. We're here for around about an hour. Might be a little bit longer. Depends how much... Might uh, be a bit get. less, actually, because I want to get under the duvet. I'm freezing. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say, uh, sitting here in a T-shirt, it'll probably uh, transform into uh, a jersey any minute because it is uh, bloody freezing here. Uh, but we're back for the podcast. It's uh, the hardware edition. We're going to go through uh, lots of things tonight. We've got competitions, first of all. We're then going to go through hardware. Uh, we've got some news to talk about. We've got Sky Glass, uh, Epson 4K projectors. Um, we've got a sound bar roundup from Steve. He's been looking at a couple of sound bars. We're also going to cover surprise, our surprise. dedicated... Yeah, I was just going to say that. But uh, also dedicated room, your home cinema. Uh, this week, we are discussing sub bass with subwoofers, so uh, stick around for that. Uh, also, we'll quick, quickly, briefly go through software at the end of the podcast, our album of the week, 4K Discs of the Week, and what we have been watching in the previous two weeks since we were last here. Uh, obviously, it was a movies podcast last week. Uh, if you haven't seen that yet, then uh, wait to the end of this podcast, and then you can go back and, uh, and watch that one. Right, so uh, what have you been up to, Ed? Uh, it's been a bit of work. Um, it, it, essentially, it's um, uh, sort of tra- moving stuff over to. Um, I've, I've moved a couple of things over to sort of uh, wintry things. It's, Steve was talking about duvets. I finally made the switch to uh, the non summer. I mean, I don't have a winter duvet, um, I have a, a, a thicker than a summer duvet. So we changed over to that. Um, I, it's interesting I'm, you mentioned that because. I, I had a, a, a thin duvet, like a four tog, I suppose, or something like that, yeah. that I used in Hong Kong because obviously most of the time it was hot and you didn't need a thick duvet. Mm-hmm. And I moved back to England and then, um, you know, discovered that it was a lot colder. And, and I sort of like put another duvet on top because I had one on the spare bed and I used that for a while. Then I invested in an electric blanket to try and keep me warm at night. <laughs> and then about three weeks ago, I, I just bought a 13, 13 and a half tog duvet why didn't I do that 12 years ago? It's like <laughs> it's like being in a womb. It's I mean, I'm struggling to get out of bed in the mornings now because it's so cozy. <laughs> yeah. So no one had talk, told you about Tog at any stage. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. I just I just I just pig-headedness <laughs> on my part. I, I refuse to just I kept thinking like, oh, I don't want to buy another duvet because I've got to store one while I use the other. Um and then eventually I thought, you know what? It's, it's getting cold. I'm gonna get another duvet. So I, I bought this duvet and it's it's I mean, I can't believe I've been, it's taken me 12 years to get around to this. Well, I mean, no, I am impressed, if I'm also, honest. Also, the only reason I thought not using an electric blanket, because with energy prices going the way they're going, I can't afford to anymore. Well, is it no, gas-powered? No. Well, no, I mean, electricity is still... <laughs> yeah, it, you know, essentially, yeah. no. They're all I, going up, Phil, they're all going up. I am quite glad that I um, I, I locked a two-year tariff in in early September. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that the energy company would turn around and say, no, we're not honouring that. We'll go bankrupt <laughs> one or the other. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. But um, I the switched to lot... Octopus Energy, actually, about um, three, four months ago. They're excellent. Well, um, well quite well the stay around. And well, if stay anybody around. listening to this podcast decides to go and, con- and switch to Octopus Energy, please use my email address because I get 50 quid for every single one of you that does it. <laughs> and then they'll go bust. Um, yeah. But no. Um, no, I, I, I've also, I do the, I don't reduce my direct debit over the summer months. So I have built up an accrued credit, um, which will probably give me at least 15 <laughs> or 20 minutes worth of, of yep. eating. So yeah, I just missed so, my mouth then when I was drinking that. <laughs> um, so yes, there's that. And, um, otherwise I've been doing lots of work because that's usual soup season back in full effect. Now, um, I, I did, uh, curried spinach and lentil today um and very nice it was too so yeah um it, i'm afraid nothing terribly exciting but um you know i'm churning out work for you guys and churning out work for other people and um yeah uh so why I mean, have you got 800 watts of power ed 
What's going uh, on well, this, this is, these, these turned up, ironically, they're the bigger version of a product I have reviewed for AV forums, the XTZ A300 power amplifier. They, uh, I'm covering the A400 for a different publication. Um, and they said, do you mind if we send two of them? You can use them in bridge mode. And, uh, you know, when you just reply to me, it's like, yeah, fine, that's the address. Just, just you go nuts, knock yourself out. And it probably should have been a clue in the name 400 that it, that's how much they produce in stereo into four ohms. Um, and yeah, if you bridge them, 800 watts per side. Um, and there's not a lot in the house which is capable of withstanding stuff in 800 <laughs> watts up the message. I'm not sure the house is capable of withstanding. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, I, I'll I'll cross how to deal with that in its in the fullness of time. I'm running one at the moment at the moment, and there, there's plenty of headroom. Let's leave it at that. So um, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I mean, obviously, if you know, if you, if, if you believe this, if you're listening to this and you, you have a passionate desire for me to do a short, probably a short form, because I've already done the long one for the small one. If you desperately want me to cover it, do let me know and we can we can work out from there. But I wasn't planning on doing this one for AVF because it, it, it's quite similar to the A300, but bigger, yeah. basically. Um, so, yeah, that's 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 me up until this point, Phil. OK, good stuff. Uh, Steve, what have you been up to? Uh, well, apart from me discovering the joys of a, a really thick duvet. Um, and uh, I think since we last spoke, going, I went to see Bond, of course. All right. What did you I think? Might... Hmm. I was <laughs> enjoying it. I was enjoying it till the last 10 minutes. Right. Okay. Um, and oh, don't, uh, don't spoil it. No, no, no. I wasn't going to spoil it. I mean, I was just saying I was enjoying it. And uh, it's got, you know, villains really weak. But I think most of the villains in the, Bond, in the Craig Bonds have been weak. Um, I'm not quite sure what his plan even was. To be honest, uh, some of it was some of it was just plain silly. Some of it, though, you're thinking like, yeah, I can really see why they pulled this in April 2020 because you know the basic plot involves a uh, um, a manufactured virus. Although no one ever says the word virus, and I'm pretty sure that's ADR'd out. And also, they do a there's one shot where it cuts to like a, a computer screen and a voiceover saying that the you know, this. This weapon is using nanobots rather than being, you know, presumably as opposed to being biologically manufactured. And uh, I'm thinking, yeah, that looks exact. That looks like that was dropped in as well. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm yeah. sure they was desperately trying to like cover over a few things before they released it because it was a, yeah, essentially the, the weapon in it is 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 a is a virus, basically okay. a DNA targeted virus. That's what they were using. So okay. I, what, I saw that. Um, if you're not I mean, that, the two, the two things of note um, I, that I, I will. Uh, not mention one, one in, in its entirety is it te- I suppose it's technically a spoiler there's a, as I understand it a wholly unexpected cameo um uh, like and you, Dennis. for fan and for fans of truly terrible cars there's a second generation Maserati Quattroporte in there as well um and quite how on earth they found one of those that was still able to move under its own steam to future in the film I think is quite quite touching in itself has anybody but they've seen this then you haven't seen it Phil I, I know. Uh, no, I, I, I was going to go and see it at the Dolby Cinema in uh, in London. I, I didn't. Uh, I ended up doing something different. And Did, uh, I was sitting in a restaurant, and the couple next to us started talking it very loudly, uh, you know, spoiling it. So we got up and left very quickly. Um, to be fair, uh, I did like the tweet. I don't know if anyone else saw it. Someone said, uh, I will get round to watching um, No Time to Die, but only in the format that it deserves, which is on ITV2. And that, that resonated with me. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, I was sat, I mean, first of all, um, tickets, the tickets, two tickets, 30 quid. That's outrageous. I mean, I, already I was thinking that's, that's ridiculous. Then on the way there, I accidentally went into a bus lane because I was trying to turn left. I got a 35 quid fine from <laughs> Cardiff Council for <laughs> Q Cardiff. Um, never, and and, and the, in the cinema, I'm sat there, and it's the IMAX in Cardiff, and I'm sat there and I'm watching the film, and it's, you know, it's, I don't know what aspect ratio, it's in the 1.9 to 1 aspect ratio, and sometimes I had a little bit of black, black bars top and bottom, a little bit, not a lot. And I'm thinking like Bond's scope ratio, that's the way it should be seen. I don't want to see that. And also, there's a DLP projector, two DLP projectors, I think, because it's a Limax. Blacks were shit. And I'm sat there thinking, I have literally got better at home. I'd already booked tickets to see June next week. But I thought, this um, next week when I see June is the last time I'm going to the cinema. I'm done. I'm done with the cinema. I've got better at home. I can't be asked for traipsing over to Cardiff and getting fine for crap i'm not paying 30 or 15 quid each to go and see a bloody film 
Um, I can wait a few months and just get the disc or, you know, whatever. And uh, I'm, yeah, I'm done. That's it. So June will be my last trip to the cinema ever. I look forward to the movies team <laughs> issuing a fatwa. <laughs> Fundamentally, they can take their cinema and they can okay. stuff it up their ass, <laughs> right? So, it's, uh, movies yeah. too. I mean, I mean, cinemas in general. Yeah, I, I like uh, I like the fact that you sit on the fence, Steve. Uh, very well done there. Um, so, uh, if, talking about ticket prices, uh, I went to see Back to the Future the musical when I was in London last week. Oh yeah, um, and uh, I was very much like you, Steve, uh, that you voiced the last time we were on the podcast. You thought, how the hell are they going to do this? How are they going to translate it to the stage? incredibly well um i was blown away i wasn't expecting I suppose it depends on the songs catchy that's the main thing isn't it well uh, yeah and and obviously uh done by the composer um so oh it, me alan silvestri yes yes been. so so a lot of them were, were written by him a lot of film music or obviously the orchestra at the front as well playing everything um special effects were superb uh, they had a full-size DeLorean, which they had built. So it wasn't an actual car. It was a rig to look like a DeLorean car, obviously, so they could move it around the stage and so on. I won't spoil it for people that go and see because the special effects at one point are absolutely amazing. Um, and it looks like the car's driving. The, the way they use the projection and the car moving and lighting effects and all that kind of thing, um, they managed to pull it off. Obviously, they changed the plot quite a bit. Um well, for you the just stage. Tommy his mum. <laughs> so to, to get they, more musical uh, numbers in, one assumes. Well, they, they had to drop certain characters, they had to drop certain scenes because they just wouldn't work on stage. And um, there's things like the DeLorean, you can you can um, voice activate and stuff like that, which mm. obviously is, is there for some plot points and so on that they've added in. But in terms of good fun, I mean, the theatre was absolutely packed out, uh, stand innovation at the end. It was fantastic. I wasn't expecting it. I was with somebody who wasn't a, a huge Back to the Future fan who absolutely loved it. Well, I'm, well. I'm very great, glad so. that at least one of you enjoyed your big night out. <laughs> so that's it good. Friday afternoon, actually. Oh, oh, pouring rain. Did they, does he still sing Johnny Be Good? Yes, oh, they, they do all that power of love at the end and uh, back in time. They do the a couple mm. of you listen. Um, so, yeah, it's really, really good. Although ticket prices, I think it was a hundred quid a ticket. Um, mm. So, so <laughs> it's it's the West End after all. So, God, yeah. uh, I know, but bloody hell! <laughs> but it was you worth it. Buy a DeLorean for two tickets to that. Show. I, oh no! It was, Have you seen how much they're going for now? No, I'm only, yeah. I'm only no, I, I hand on heart, I thought it was worth every penny. I thoroughly Good. enjoyed it. Well, I thought, no, it, was, look, thought it, it was fantastic. It, so, if you get is a, is a quote is a different quote from different people. If you feel it's worth it, then you know yeah, that, that's, absolutely, that's good, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So, it's, I mean, Steve complaining about fifteen quid tickets for IMAX. Yeah, okay, but uh, more, my complaint was more Phil that before the pandemic, it was eight quid a ticket. Right. <laughs> yeah, but there's only half as, as many of you going now. Although yeah. actually now yeah. the, you're down as well, so they're only going to get more oh, expensive no. until it's one bloke paying a hundred pounds a ticket to sit on his own. Yeah. So, uh, if any, anybody's heading to London um, and you can get tickets, highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. Go see it because it is fantastic. If you're a Back to the Future fan, you'll love it as well. I wore a DeLorean t shirt and got quite a few uh, uh, admiring uh, comments about the, the t shirts. So there's people dressed up as well, some members that turned up and so on. So, yeah, it was, it was really, really good fun. Um, good family night out. So, highly recommend that. Right, so that's what we've been up to. Uh, current competitions, we need to get through those. Uh, so, Steve, why don't you do them this week? Okay, well, this week you can win a KEP LS50 Wireless 2 all in one speaker system worth, brace yourselves, two and a half thousand pounds. Now, Ed, I believe you reviewed this. I have. It's, uh, it's bloody prize. <laughs> this is a hell of a prize. You need to enter this with, with just mm -hmm. without hesitation. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal thing. Um, you know, Steve's going to talk lots and lots about sandbars. I think this is a very credible alternative if you if you're certainly looking for mixed pattern usage as well. I think it's fantastic, and this is a this is one of the best prizes we've offered all year. You can also win Monster Hunter in 4K. I've seen that. No, not a great film, but it's got a really good soundtrack. Uh, Night of the Animated Dead on Blu-ray. Uh, American Gods season three on Blu-ray. Criterion's October titles on Blu-ray. A number of titles Mark recommended from his September lineup, including Monstrum, Psycho Gorman and Son, and our Bond podcast competition to win Casino Royale in 4K is still open too. So head over to abforums.com slash competitions to enter. All competitions are open to eligible AB, AB Forums members resident in the UK and not open to Phil, I believe. Yeah, Phil can't. 
Yeah. yeah. Any any previous winners? Yeah. Uh, so the Beavers won the patron exclusive Criterion August titles on Blu-ray. Uh, Phil O.D. I think that's not you. Phil, uh, won the podcast exclusive copy of The Man with the Iron Fists on Blu-ray. Um, Blue Petros uh, won the A Quiet Place Part Part Two 4K Survival Bundle. I wonder what's in that. And then Flying Pigs won the podcast exclusive Natural Born Killers on Blu-ray. Okay. So stay tuned. Hang on, I'm not finished. Stay tuned for a chance to win the podcast exclusive copy of The Lost, Ooh, the Lost Boys on Blu-ray. Um, right into that. There you go. Good stuff. Who directed uh, so... The Lost Boys? <laughs> How right. lost are these boys? <laughs> <laughs> That's all the competitions done. Congratulations if you won prizes. And, of course, get yourselves entered into those. Uh, we'll be back in a second to talk hardware. If you'd like to support the AV Forums podcast on a regular basis, then why not become a patron? Head over to patreon.com forward slash AV Forums to sign up. You can also make a one-off donation through the Super Chat or via streamlabs.com forward slash AV Forums. All donations help us to improve the website and the podcasts. Thank you to all our supporters. Uh, welcome, new patron, EV Bike Dude. Thank you very much for uh, for joining us and supporting the site. It really is appreciated. So uh, that's a new patron, EV Bike Dude. Uh, welcome to the cult. I'm assuming he has an electric vehicle. Right? Uh, yeah. Is that the, a reasonable assumption? Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's either got an EV and he, he's a bike dude or he's got an electric bike. I'm not quite sure. Maybe you could tell us in the comments if he's, uh, if he's listening. Yeah, he's just, he's um, don't forget the comments are open tonight. If you're watching us live on YouTube, yeah. Yeah, you can do that. So uh, get your questions in there and we'll come on Phil, to those I, and we'll answer them. In, one quickly on the, on the comments because they're starting to get a bit carried away here. Yeah. Doctor No. 1.66 to 1 aspect ratio. Uh, same with um, from Russia with Love. I believe uh, Goldfinger may also be 1.66 or, or 1.85 to 1. After that, from Thunderbolt onwards, there were scope ratio films apart from Live and Let Die, which for some reason 1.85 to 1. Okay. Right. Uh, but like I said, thanks for your permission to do that. Uh, but like I say, uh, competitions uh, are done. The questions are open. Ask your questions. We'll try and answer them as we go on. Um, and if you want to correct Steve, keep correcting Steve and, and he will jump in. And, and, and does not correct me. They were just pointing out. I don't know. Yeah. Going. <laughs> oh, he's got a Tesla 3 EV bike, dude. Uh, so there we go. Ah, um, there, go. there we go. So it's a car. Right. For those that didn't know. Uh, right, so let's talk some news. Let's have a look at uh, what's been happening since we've been away. And uh, first of all, let's go to Epson. Epson have announced uh, 4K laser projectors. Steve, tell us all about them. Yeah, well, um, as far as I can tell, I mean, looking at, the, looking at the press release, at least, it looks like, to me, these are essentially the, uh, uh, the TW9400, but with a laser light source. So I, I'm not sure... Um, you know, uh, it's not quite the quantum leap you might associate with, say, the JVC projects we've been talking about in, in uh, previous podcasts. But, um, I mean, Epson were the pioneers, really, in terms of consumer laser projectors, because they had the LS10,000 and 10,500. Yep. Um, and I think I reviewed the 10,000, and it was a great projector. Um, but those used uh, Epson's version of um, Elcos, so like Sony's SXRD and, and JVC's DLA. Um, that's a, um, what's the word I'm thinking of, a reflective technology rather than um, LCD where you pass the light through the power. These new projectors, which are the EHLS-1100W and the EHLS-1200B, so one's white and one's black, I'm guessing on that one, um, they, uh, they are three LCD chipsets. So basically like the TW, uh, TW9400, for example, um, they're using the same uh, LCD panels, but using a laser light source rather than a lamp. Um, they do include HDR10 plus support, which is something that's also been added to, um, to the JVCs. Uh, and they claim a lag time of under 20 milliseconds, which will be good for gamers. Um, still not native 4K though. So these are, I mean, they obviously, they claim 4K resolution, but they're not native 4K. They are using um, pixel shifting to deliver it. Um, brightness wise, 2500 lumens for the 1100 and 2700 lumens for the 1200. Uh, and anything I'm missing? Oh, an HDMI 2.1 port, which means you can do gaming up to 4K 120. So, Steve, so what's it's, the it's difference in, Steve, what's the difference in cost? Th sorry, the cost difference then between 
these things at 4.4 and that JVC that isn't changed as part of the current... But, but double the price? Uh, in oh, fact, well, no, 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 almost almost treble the price. For the N5? No, uh, no N5 double, double to the N5, yeah. So to, to, six hundred five. Yeah. Just so, just on, on pricing, the LS eleven hundred W, which is, which is I guess white, uh, that is um, four thousand one hundred, and the LS twelve hundred B, which is black, is four thousand four hundred. I'm just ch checking what the difference is in. Why is there a? Because that would be a lot for a color change. Just different. No, no, no. Colors. There's 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 there different. Uh, light, light, light slightly brighter. One slightly yeah, brighter. Light, that, light that's light different. Looks a bit slightly brighter. Um, and they're going to be available. Well. I mean, they're meant to be available in October, November, but we'll see <laughs> because everything's being delayed at the moment. Yeah. Uh, but, but you know, um, not not to um, poo poo these because listen, the TW nine four hundred cracking projector. So if you're going to get HDMI two point one one twenty hertz support, HDR ten plus, um, and a laser light source for that kind of price, I mean that is obviously nearly double the price of the um, that's good. Uh, well, at least a thousand, one and a half thousand more than the uh, TW9400. But, you know, that's uh, still a really competitive price. Uh, and given how good the previous model was with these extra features and the laser light source, I mean, that, that could be that could be a really cracking uh, choice for somebody looking looking to get into laser projection, but obviously can't go the kind of prices that Sony and uh, JVC are asking, which is, you know, a lot more than that. I mean, even the cheapest JVC laser projector is, is knocking on the door of yeah. well, eleven thousand five hundred, doesn't it? So it's, it's yeah. three times the price. Yeah. So um, the the one thing here that might put people off is that they're not a native, it's not a native four K uh, panel. But um, I would challenge you to set at your normal viewing distance um, with a native four K and uh, and one of these and be able to tell the difference um, with video content um, playing because it, it's really, really difficult to to notice that. So I wouldn't let that put you off. And of course, they have to come in at a price point. That's yeah. where that's where you know they're they're cutting the price there because uh, a native chip is, is you know just the R and D behind. Uh, a native chip. I don't know if there is a native LCD chip. In, in I don't think that, that. I don't think there is. No. Mm -hmm. So I mean, um, we start from scratch. So you know, you, they've got to go with the, the technology that's there. Um, they're being competitive. Um, you know, four thousand one hundred and four thousand four hundred. Still a lot of money for a projector, but again, it's laser source. Uh, so you've got instant on off. Um, you've got a good stability when it comes to color, yeah. and when it comes to your calibration as well. Uh, lag Long time. Lifetime. If it is 20 milliseconds and it's a, a 2.1 port on there as well, 4K 120 frames, it's ideal for uh, gamers. And there's nothing beats gaming on a huge screen. A projector and also, screen obviously, like with the laser, there's less concern about the actual life life lifespan. Is, is yeah, lifespan is longer. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah. not DLP, so no no rainbow effect. That's something you suffer from. My only, I mean, like you say, Phil, I wouldn't be concerned about the actual resolution. I think it'll look, you won't be able to tell the difference at a normal viewing distance. My only concern really would be, well, two things, because uh, it's LCD, is obviously the black levels won't be as good as uh, LCOS. Uh, and um, there's always a danger of dust blobs, particularly with LCD yeah. panels for some reason. But... Yeah, you just need to be careful with those and, and be yeah. aware of them when, when you start. Um, there's some nice features on here as well. I mean, 4K frame interpolation. So if you're into uh, sports and you want to watch football and so on, and you want to add a little bit of interpolation in there for motion and so on, uh, you've got the option with these. So uh, it's good to see that on there as well. Um, I'm not too keen on scene adaptive stuff like the gamma correction and the contrast enhancement, but some people will enjoy that. But the thing that does stick out for me, and I wish JVC would do this, is that they're compatible with Kalman for AutoCAD, yes. um, which is great to see. Um, and I'd love JVC to do that with their projectors because they, they still insist on using a, a very inaccurate spider uh, probe with, with their uh, built-in calibration support. So it'd be nice to see them actually going with the industry standard which is common um which these projectors uh, are doing and I, I i look forward to testing that out because it's uh, it'd be interesting to see how it works um with projectors because it works fantastic with tvs uh, that have yeah. it built in so um so yeah so that's and, the news from epson um they, they have lens memories which is also a nice feature at that price point yeah i mean it uh, yeah it makes a big big difference i mean some of the uh certainly the entry level sony um doesn't. does doesn't do it um, it has a native chip, but it doesn't do lens memory. If you're like myself and Stephen, you use a scope screen in your home cinema, 
Um, you're kind of knackered if it doesn't do that, but at least these two do that. So yeah, they look like excellent machines. We will get them in for review as soon as, uh, as, soon as we can get hold of them uh, and we'll see what they're like. So that's one piece of news. The other piece of news is interesting if you're a general consumer. I don't think it's really something that AV Forums members or readers would be um, entirely interested in. It's a, it's a new uh, TV basically made by TP Vision, designed by Sky and being launched by Sky, and they're calling it Sky Glass. Um, so is it made by TP Vision on behalf of Sky, essentially. It is, yes. That, uh, so so it. Sky designed it, TP Vision built it for them. Um, so basically, you can have it in 43, 55, and 65 inch. It's a full array local dimming uh, LCD TV. Uh, 60 hertz refresh, quantum dot technology, um, 60 hertz refresh. Uh, I'd rather have seen 100 hertz or 120 hertz uh, on there. So um, it shouldn't be too bad, but you know, it will affect uh, some things in terms of motion and so on. But you've got Dolby Vision on there. You've got Atmos, uh, actually a full uh, speaker system built into the TV. So it's a yeah, three, quite one, chunky two. boys because of that. Yep. So three outward firing front. <coughs> speakers one central subwoofer and two upward firing uh, speakers as well which will give you the three one two obviously the two at the front so you've got nine behind you but um, at least they're making an effort with the sound and i think they say in their marketing uh, blurb as well that the uh, um that it, it sounds just as good as a uh, entry-level sound bar so you know they, they've obviously spent some time with that they want it to be an all-in-one package does HDR10 as well, HLG, hybrid log gamma for broadcast HDR. Um, like I say, built by TP Vision. Now, you've got a choice here. You can buy the TV outright, and there are prices in the uh, article, which you can find on the homepage if you want to delve deep into this and find a bit more uh, detail on it. Or you can do it on a subscription basis, um, and they have different tiers for the different screen sizes. And obviously, on top of that, you then have to pay for your Sky services. But the genius here is that you don't need any dish. Um, and this is what we've been waiting on Sky doing for, for some time now. You know, it's, mm. they've always been a satellite broadcaster. They're now moving into IPTV. And, uh, uh, and this can only work for them uh, and be an advantage for them. But it's the only way you can get it over IPTV at the minute is to buy this TV. But... I would suggest that they're going to launch this and then a little bit further down the line, you will be able to get a Skybox, which does not need a dish. It, it basically plugs into your into your Wi-Fi uh, or or into an Ethernet, into, a, into your router and, and works like that. So go on. I might not like, answer Sky it. recommends a broadband. Yeah, no, you probably can't, but Sky recommends a broadband with a minimum speed of 10 megabits. So what exactly are they delivering here? 4K, Atmos, HDR? I mean, well, then, like you, now TV, which is the worst streaming service in the on the planet. Well, <laughs> what, what if is... if they're moving their services over, then I imagine that because the TV is specified with Dolby Vision and Atmos and HLG um, and Dolby Atmos, that they will be uh, taking You're not advantage. Get that with ten megasecond. No, that's a minimum that they're saying. Yeah. Um, so you know, but I think Netflix say the same. They they have a minimum. Uh, they can deliver it with less than that Netflix, can't they? So I suppose yeah. maybe, but. I, the problem it says with Sky the package includes HD as standard, so which is a big plus because you're not a Sky subscriber, Steve. So you have to pay for HD on Sky. I think it's five, I think it's five quid, and then if you if you got Sky Sports, you have and you want it in HD and 4K, you have to pay again. I think again, it's something like a five. And I, you know, the package I have at the minute, it's all discounted. Um, so I don't know what the actual price is. I think I pay two pound to have the the HD and the 4K, but that's a big deal for them to include it uh, like that. So they're, they're obviously looking at how they're putting their packages together and so on. Like I say, it's probably not for the AV enthusiast because the TV specs, they're decent, but they're not well, great. Did, you, did so, you see that there is, if you like, there is a loophole in this, which may or may not possibly change. Because obviously at the same time, they announced the puck. Um, which is, if you like, the means of then using the interface of the glass in another room. Now, notionally, the idea, presumably, for most people would be that that would be the glass is your main television, and you're then going to use the puck somewhere secondary. You could flip that on its head, though, because if you decided to rent or buy the 43 for a bedroom, you could then actually use the puck to send it to whatever hell TV you you know you, your your real television, yeah, and and then still make 
use of, of dishless sky because it's the same interface with the same and uh, as i understand it the puck has the same hardware capabilities as the glass yeah yeah so i mean it, they've thought about this and, and reading the market and you can see why they've launched it the way they have so 10 megabits per second is all you need to get the most out of this um which is even better news over 90 percent of homes have that so obviously they've done their research They've looked at what the bare minimum is and, and they hit the bare minimum. So they're going to have the, and this is aimed at, at the wide market. So that's what they're aiming for. And it's HD broadband speed required. Yeah. That's going to be the vast majority of people. Uh, the vast majority of people are not going to go for the 4K, which they're uh, down is 25 megabits per second uh, speed required. Um, and I've no doubt they will do deals where they, they put their broadband and router and everything else into a package as well. Um, it's Sky moving on, basically, uh, moving away from uh, satellite broadcast, looking to up the game. And it's the first product that they've announced to do that. I think it surprised a lot of people that it was actually TV. I think a lot of people thought it was going to be uh, a stick, you know, like a Chromecast stick or a Fire Stick type device um, that you would get your Sky TV through. Um, and that's not what they've gone with. They've gone with a, a, a full-on TV. Um, and just looking at some of the packages here, so a uh, 65-inch TV, um, you could do that 48 monthly payments of £21 a month. And I understand that this is actually um, an interest-free loan to buy the TV. So you're not renting the TV. It's not a rental deal. It's actually a 24-month interest-free loan um, on top of that. So it, there's a lot to look into. There's a lot of, a lot of uh, small print to look at, which I, I haven't personally had a lot of time to go through. I've, I've kind of skimmed through uh, the gist of, of what's what. But for a normal consumer, this looks like a, a good way to update their TV, uh, get Sky, get some uh, decent broadcast HDR and watch films in 4K and so on. It opens it up for a much wider um, audience and obviously Sky have done their homework as well. I mean, do you, at this, so. presumably it works on the principle as much as anything else that this allows them to test the hardware if you like. It's not beta, obviously. It, 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 it you know, it, it, it's far, you know, more finalized than that. But if you like, it's a controlled environment of a, of a, for the most part, it's running entirely on Sky's own equipment in a way that, you know, they, in the way that they've done with the set top boxes and that you can iron out any notional bugs and stuff and then i suppose go and see if you can start offering it as an in, in embedded app to to some yeah. of the major players i mean it, it, I've, I've read a lot of the the comments again i've, I've kind of skimmed through the it, it's a big thread and if you want to really dive into this then you know head over to the forums head over to the thread uh, lots of interesting comments in there um i expected apple to do this not sky mm. i thought i thought apple were going to be the, the one to launch a TV like this with streaming built in and all done through IPTV. I thought that's where this technology would be launched. So it's quite surprising that Sky have, have gone with it. Um, it'll be interesting to see what the uptake is. Uh, it, I mean, it's a consumer product, so there's lots of different finishes, lots of different colors. I'm not sure on the design personally, uh, but then design subjective. So I don't know. Um, I know you're quite anti-Sky, Steve, but what do you think of, of this now you've had time to have a look at it package-wise and so on? Maybe not from an AV point of view, but just as a general consumer point of view. Not like my advice would be buy a TV from somebody else and get a Roku streaming stick and not bother subscribing for Now TV, but that's down to me. I don't see the point. This just feels like too little, too late, and, and what's the point? Um, you are a little ray of sunshine this evening, I, he is, isn't he? Isn't he just, just just wait for Amazon to buy out Premiership football from Sky, and then we can all move on, can't we? And if HBO Max launches this country, I'll ditch my now script now TV. Well, you, you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna have trouble because I don't know if you caught the H, uh, H, HBO Max story that Andy put up um, last week. Uh, they're launching in Europe, not in the UK. No, well, I'm assuming they're starting no. standing deals with Sky. Yeah. So um, it looks like 2026 before those deals even finish. So it's going to be some time before that happens. But anyway, back to the subject. Ed, it'll what's be time your to take. On this? Sorry. Um, I'm a slightly, uh, 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 for whatever reason, I got out on the, a better side of the bed today than Steve. Did. Um, <laughs> I think we all did. I. Look, I, from a, a selfish perspective, I quite like, I mean, actually, there is a dish on the side of my house, although it dates back to the dawn of man. Um, I, I like 
the proposition of dishless sky i this initially made i, I was there i just don't understand it but as a, if you like as an initial hardware test in a controlled environment it makes a degree of sense uh, if you are not a fully paid up av enthusiast yes that begins to make more sense as well and the other thing i'd love to take credit for that puck point but i have credit where credit is due mark craven uh editor of home cinema choice he and i were, were talking about something completely different on the phone and he pointed that out that, the, that if you like you can turn glass on its head and just use a smaller one as a secondary and 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 use this interface in a, in, a, in a larger environment and that that could well have some 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 take up and some traction i guess it's going to come down to testing the puck and seeing how good it actually is at doing those various things um let's face it sky has its work cut out to survive in the current climate it's not a global content producer it has problems more akin to the bbc than it does netflix but so you know it's got to do various things to stay relevant this does at least seem, you know, it's it, it, Steve. I don't, I don't necessarily disagree that it's quite a late play for it, but nevertheless, you know, it seems quite, quite a reasonable piece of hardware in yeah. its own in its own sense. So we'll have to see. I guess if nothing, what the the real proof of concept is how quickly this adapts into a more. In, you know whether there's an, an enthusiast whether, whether there's the means of getting hold of pucks separately or or some other thing or, or some other means of, of of using it with with televisions other than this one and how quickly they want to open up open up the walled garden for other people to play in it and see where we go from there i yeah. suppose if it I, ends I, up with now tv getting better that would be a positive yeah i, I i'm kind of between the two both of you here in terms of uh, in, in terms of point of view i think there are better solutions that a Navy enthusiast would think of, which is, you know, a better quality TV, like Steve said, and a fire stick or or whatever to, to get your streaming services. Plenty to choose from. There's plenty to choose from there. But this is where I think Sky uh, are playing their play because there's plenty out there. People get confused. They want their hand held and they want to get everything in one deal. That's, that's where Sky are going to pitch this. They're going to pitch it to the wide market who don't, maybe realise that they can get a better deal, uh, better TV, uh, pay 30, 40 quid for a stick and so on, um, and and go for something like this. Because people do, especially in the mass market, they want their hand held and told what to buy, basically. Mm. Um, and this is this is the way that Sky are pitching it. So, I mean, the other thing is that the, uh, the rental business... Um, Let's be honest, uh, with everything going, expen everything's getting expensive, whether we're heating our houses, buying food, you know, having the audacity to buy petrol, so on and so forth. Um, in an inflationary world, knowing what you're going to pay and not having to pay outright for something on a deal, which let's face it, is an order of magnitude better than many of the offers being made through more mainstream retailers. It could be that timing comes to the rescue of this as well in so far as it's you know a a, a, contra a fixed price to obtain a a, a, a a recognized piece of hardware and seeing seeing yep. if that that has any effect i mean obviously there's plenty of unknowns uh someone was asking um you know are they going to fix it if it goes wrong my gut feeling is actually they'd swap it uh but we'll see um and yeah it, it's going to be it's going to be interesting but i don't necessarily feel that it's worth discounting out of hand uh, i think some the more i read about it the more thought it appears to, to have gone into it and we'll, mm. we'll, we'll play it by ear i mean yeah. do you know if we're going to get hold of one well i have asked the question um i got in touch with the pr and i've asked them if they will send one through for review i, I know that they've offered it to some mainstream uh publications whether mm. they hand hand it over to uh the to ab the press or not um <laughs> So remains to be seen. This podcast is all I can say. Yeah, oh, wow. but um, but I've asked the question and uh, I'm waiting on a reply. So we'll see if we get one in for review. And, Tell you what, uh, it reminds me of. It reminds me of the good old days when I was a kid when you used to rent the telly from Rediffusion. And but it's not. But it's, but it's not a rental. rental. I know it's not a rental, but it's still kind of not dissimilar to that business model of you know giving somebody something but paying. A, I know it's basically it's interest free credit. Yeah. Um, over a period of time but mm. yeah for me i just felt like when ed was talking about it i got these flashbacks to um 
the renting of telly. Yeah, it, I mean, it, it's it's a it's that was a, a good business model. model. I don't know why they yeah. stopped doing it. Yeah, because well, the price <laughs> of them collapsed. And yeah, of course, so. you, you can pay up front. So I think the forty three inches about six hundred and fifty quid. The fifty five is about eight hundred something, and the sixty five is one thousand and something. Uh, in terms of price, there, there we go. It's just pay up there. So it's one thousand and forty nine for the sixty five. Uh, I mean, that's I think an absurd price for sixty five. It's still no, it, it's it's a. Uh, yeah, eight hundred and fifty for a fifty-five inch. It's it's reasonable, and if it comes with the specs, it, respectable it, sound. Yeah, I mean it's it it's the specs I would expect at that price point. Mm. Um, and, but again, it's a full array local demo, so it'll be interesting to see uh, how that works. And it's made by TP Vision, and TP Vision do some pretty good TVs, to be honest. Um, yeah. they're, they're not the worst manufacturer out there, so it'll be interesting to see it. And like I say, the ask question has been asked for a review sample. We'll see if they send us. One and if they do, we'll give you a full roundup of what we think about it. Uh, right, so let's move on very swiftly, Steve. We're going to have a quick soundbar roundup. This week's soundbar's in full. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah. Well, I won't. I'll keep it. I'll keep it quick, short, and sweet. So um, there's two two soundbars I'm going to talk about. Um, one is from Hisense, which is, I believe is their first. And they've done other soundbars, but not in this country. So this is the first soundbar that I'm aware of that they've released in the UK. The HS two one four. It's um. You know, it's it's uh, a single unit soundbar. There's no separate subwoofer. It's priced um, for the market. You know, it's ninety nine quid. So it's mm, not. It's, it's, it's priced. It's priced to basically be a quick, easy, simple way of beefing up the sound quality of your TV with the minimum amount of fuss. Um, it's, it's also very useful for say secondary rooms, smaller rooms, studies, bedrooms, that kind of thing. Um, it's. I've got to say, for 99 quid, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's obviously it's, it's lossless audio. It doesn't support DTS, DTS I should point out. Um, and it doesn't have a Wi-Fi like that built in. So it's very basic. It's basically got an, 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 a D HDMI ARC connector. Um, there's no, um, you know, you just plug it in, ARC, job done. You can also use optical digital. And they do include cables for optical digital and HDMI as well. Um, so... It's, it's designed to be a, a quick, easy, simple way of boosting the sound quality of your TV. Uh, and in that sense, it does a pretty good job, pretty good job. Um, it's got a little uh, subwoofer built into the bottom. Um, and so it, it, it does sound bigger than it looks. Uh, and I, 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 it's interesting, I had it straight after I, I reviewed the Yamaha um, SRC20A, which is very similar in the sense it's a single unit, um, no separate subwoofer, you know, it's designed to be added to a TV to boost, boost the sound. It's designed to be used in smaller rooms and with smaller screen sizes and um, places like studies and bedrooms. Uh, the Yamaha is slightly more refined, slightly better performer, but it is over twice the price. So for just under 100 quid, and you're thinking, oh, I wouldn't mind having slightly better sound in the bedroom, for example, this is a good way of doing it. Uh, and so I, I quite liked it, you know, for a first effort. Yes, it's priced to a certain point. It's pretty well made, though, you know, considering it's only 99 quid. And like I say, they include everything you need in the box, including an HDMI cable and an optical digital cable. So, you know, I, I think if you're looking, if you're thinking, you know, TV doesn't sound very good, and most don't these days, let's be honest. Uh, and you're thinking, I wouldn't mind boosting the sound quality, uh, and you haven't got a massive screen, uh, definitely worth considering. So that's the Hisense HS214, which gets a recommended badge from me when the review goes up. And the other one, and this has been a long time coming. I think this was announced. Correct me if I'm wrong here, Phil, but I'm pretty sure this was announced back in January. Yeah, beginning <laughs> of the, the year. Uh, yeah. yeah, this is the Denon Home 550. So uh, the, the Denon have had their, and we've reviewed, um, I reviewed the 350, I think it was. So we've had, uh, they've got their home range of, wireless speakers so there's the 150 250 350 and they uh obviously use denon's um or sound united i suppose so their heos multi-room system this is the home 550 so it's a again single unit soundbar uh it's been introduced to work with the others with the 150 or the or the 250 or the 350 so you can create uh via heos a a surround sound system wireless with wireless rears uh, i probably suggest given the size of the 550 that the 150s would be ideal to use as, as you want if you want to do, do this to have wireless surrounds uh, also there is a wireless subwoofer available that you can also use 
uh, buy and use as part of this heel system. The 550 is two channels, so you don't have a dedicated center channel, but um, it does a pretty good job with, with dialogue. So, you know, you don't really notice the fact there isn't a dedicated center channel. It supports Atmos uh, and DTSX, but, and this is a big but, it doesn't use upward firing drivers. So it is a two channel soundbar. Um, it has, um, you know, woofers built into it. So it's got some reasonable base for, for you know, for a standalone unit, but it's two channel. So there's no upward firing drivers. It's creating immersion via psychoacoustic processing, which, you know, always go in with some expect manager expectations there because you're not going to get sounds coming from above you. It will feel more immersive and more airy and a bit more, have more presence, but it, you know, compared to a, a soundboard that uses upward firing drivers or an actual Atmos system with overhead speakers, you know, it's not the same as that, but um, it's well-made, it looks great. It works really well. It, you know, it's, it's a, a nicely made, it sounds great. Like I said, it hasn't got a dedicated center channel, but it gets away with it. It delivers a good, uh, a good you know, expansive front sound stage. The bass with the built-in woofers is well integrated. Um, got it's got EOS built it. in. It's got what's that? Quadrat. What's that? The fabric. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah obviously. Um, so the bad news uh, is it's 599 quid. So that high sense is starting to look really cheap. Um, uh, you know, and if you do go the wireless system route, and I did add it up, how much did I say it's going to cost? Yeah, so if you, if you say you use the S1, sorry, the um, Home 150s, which are 189 quid each. So you need two of those, obviously, if you're going to use them as surround channels, plus the 550 for the Denon, the, uh, sorry, yeah, 550 for the 550. And then the uh, DSW1H, which is the wireless sub, that's another 600 quid. So to build a 4.1 channel wireless system using HEOS and these products would cost you just over one and a half thousand pounds. Spendy. Bit toppy. Uh, so as a soundbar on its own, it, it's, it's a very capable performer. Um, I just think I'm not entirely sure where it's going. It's like some of these products at the moment where you think, well, I'm not really sure where, who they're aimed at. Maybe if you already invested in the HEOS system, and you, and you like the idea of adding a soundbar, and you've already got, say, a couple of S1, a couple of 150, sorry, I keep saying S150, that's my speaker, <laughs> home 150, uh, or you want to add the subwoofer, you could do that. But as Ed's pointed out at the beginning of this podcast, when we were talking about the KEFs that are a competition prize, there's some really interesting ways these days to add audio to your TV um, without even buying a soundbar. Uh, so... Yeah, it, it's it's a perfectly competent performer. I liked it in many respects. But I did feel it was a bit toppy in terms of price. And as I said, it's not delivering immersive audio using upward firing drivers. So it's psychoacoustic processing and that's always, you know, limited in what it can achieve. Any questions? <laughs> No, nope, I think you've covered everything. No, uh, it's exhausted. and it's it's an interesting proposition from Denon, but like you say, it could, it gets pricey pretty quickly. So, uh, especially uh, when I you think, compare it to competition. I mean, the yeah. Sonos Arc. I mean, it's a bit more, bit more, bit more expensive at seven nine nine. But you know, that's got upward firing drivers as well. Yeah. yeah. So you look at something like the LG SP eight eight YA. That's seven hundred quid. That's a three point one point two channel system. It comes with a separate soundbar. It's got a dedicated center channel. Sorry, separate subwoofer. It's got a dedicated center channel two upper firing drivers, uh, you know, the, it's a, the, the, the soundbar market is very crowded and very competitive. Yeah. And um, yeah, so. Okay. Well, those reviews will be going up, so keep an eye on the homepage. Uh, Steve's reviews, like I say, you've had a sneak peek at them if you've been watching uh, on YouTube. Um, so, yeah. Look out for this. Right. We need to move on quite swiftly. Uh, we've got lots to, still to get through tonight on the podcast. Um, so let's move on to building a dedicated home cinema. It's something we've been talking about on all of the hardware podcasts uh, recently. Uh, we're up to subwoofers now. We, we spoke about speakers last time out. Um, we didn't really touch on subwoofers. And I guess it's a subject where we could really get into uh, a, a lot of detail. And we're not going to do that tonight because we could be here all night. All and look, we're, not, we're not going to bore you. We're going to cover the basics here. Um, and basically, because it's a dedicated room, you're looking at what is best practice when it comes to subwoofer. So we'll, we'll talk about best practice. One in each corner. 
Because if you've laid out your room correctly and it's a dedicated room and you want base uh, to be balanced, it's not about headroom adding more subwoofers in, which is a, a, a an issue that people think, well, I'm going to add two subwoofers, so it's going to be twice as loud. No, uh, that's not why you add multiple subwoofers into a system and you don't uh, you know, double the base or whatever. Uh, adding multiple subwoofers is more about um, equaling out the wavelength so where you're sitting in the room, you get a nice, even response to the bass uh, because a, a bass wave, basically a sound wave, is a long wave. Um, it travels quite some distance and it causes all sorts of issues uh, in a room. And what you're looking to do is balance these issues out. So you're basically not sitting in a trough. Uh, because of the, the, it's a long wave, um, sound wave, there are peaks and troughs. And if you've got one subwoofer and it's misplaced within the room or not placed in, a, in an ideal position, you could sit in a null and not hear any bass. And it's quite easy to do that in a room. If you have one subwoofer, walk around the room. There will be certain areas of that room where it disappears completely. Um, and that's because you're now standing in the null position where, where you know there is no volume to the base whatsoever. So when we talk about multiple subwoofers, we're basically talking about even the chances out that you're not going to sit in a null. You're going to be in a position where the base is nice and consistent across uh, all the frequency range. Um, is you're not going to hit any resonant frequencies in each room. Every room has a resonant frequency uh, where it's going to boost uh, the, the performance as well. So basic 101 rules are positioning of the subwoofer is of utmost importance. Um, so rather than me rambling on and on and on, Steve's going to put his HAA hat on and give us some ideas of how to find the best place to position our subwoofer, Steve. Well. The easiest approach is to put the sub at the sweet spot and then move around the room uh, you know, by the wall, essentially. To, uh, let's say it's just one sub for the moment. So you're putting one sub in the system to so put the sub sweet spot down at the front of the room uh, and then gradually move around the front wall, listening for where it sounds the most balanced. Um, and as you said, Phil, there will be places in the room where you won't be able to hear it at all practically. And other places where it will feel boomy and a bit too, uh, you know, too, too, too boomy, and, uh, and then there'll be there will be places where you think that sounds nice and balanced, and that's probably the best place to put sub. That's the quick and dirty and easiest way to, to find a good place to put your sub. Um, Phil did mention, you know, putting them in the corners. Ideally, you'd want four subs, one in each corner. But even if you're doing a dedicated room, the chances are you're converting a room into your home cinema. And unfortunately, most rooms these days have a door in the corner, which does eliminate yeah. one of the corners being, I, I did, being I did an option. Pre, I did preface my uh, my advice there by saying, in an ideal world and in a dedicated room, yeah. um, we don't live in an ideal world, so compromises have to be made. Um, but if you can get them in each corner, then, you know, job done. You can do it. Some sort of fine pole arrangement, come down into the room <laughs> through your Atmos speakers. Yeah. Show some dedication and you know, commitment to the cause. So, you know. <laughs> um, but uh, certainly, um, you know, it's quite common to have two subs at the front of the room. Uh, so you could do one in each corner. It's going to depend to a certain extent on A, the sub you're using. Different subs are designed for different places in the room. And also, as I said, depending on the room itself, whether that's going to work, work best or whether you want to put them a bit further in. Um, and as, as I say, put the sub or a sub at the sweet spot, play a, a low frequency test tone and then sat at the front and move around and, and you'll be able to quickly realise where it sounds the most balanced in that room. Um, and, and as I say, there'll be places yeah. where, it'll be, where you won't be here at all, basically. So, of course, that is the down and dirty uh, rule of thumb and how, how to do it, Steve. But if we're talking about a dedicated room, obviously we expect people to have done a little bit of homework and there are software you can buy uh, programs out there. Uh, map the room based upon its yep. dimensions and tell you where the different frequencies are and then obviously you're trying to avoid and you can actually what you can do with some of these spreadsheets is oh, sorry um, programs software what do you call, what do you call it software <laughs> the, yeah well i think when i was doing it i was actually using a, 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 was a, a pencil and a <laughs> no no it wasn't it was, it was an excel spreadsheet um, <laughs> No, uh, yes, there are some, some some programs, some software you can buy. And what you can do is you can actually position the sub, move it around within the room, and you'll see how the frequencies change. And then and you're looking for where 
it's, it, it's the most balanced in terms of um, across the entire room because that's what you're trying to do. What you're trying to do ultimately is, is develop, deliver deep bass, but in a balanced and controlled fashion. So you're not, you know, it isn't booming and over swamping the rest of the system, or it isn't, um, you know, you aren't sticking it in a null where it's, got, it's, it's sucking your life out of the bass and you can't hear it at all or feel it at all. So yes, if you're, if you, you know, if you're doing a home cinema build, um, you can. You can model the room and, and, and map out where the best place is to put the sub so, or subs. And again, you can add in more subs into, into, into these programs and then see how, how multiple subs will affect the overall um, resonance of the room itself. Uh, and, and obviously then once you've found the best or the most, most ideal slash- uh, Least often worst. It's Often it's a compromise <laughs> in terms of, you know, what's in the room and stuff, but look, we assume it's a dedicated room. So find the best position, put the subs. And then obviously on top of that, you can then EQ them either using the processor receivers built in um, room EQ um, system, or, you know, you can, you can buy things you can add to the sub to, um, to EQ the subs themselves. If you're not going to be doing, you know, either you can do that before you run the EQ in the AV receiver or processor, or you can just do the sub independently. Um, there are lots of things you can do. The idea, what you're trying to do ultimately is to, is to put together a system that's balanced and where the lower frequencies delivered by the subwoofer are crossing over smoothly with the higher frequencies that are handled by the other speakers in the system and the, the, and the impact of the room is minimized. That's what you're trying to do. Yeah. This it's, is a really boring, I do remember what Freddie would say about room, room resonance is an absolute pig. Uh, we've covered it at various points. Um, uh, something that Steve was saying at the start just triggered a, um, uh, a memory. John Jack Perry, uh, who did, was a, a pioneering French electronic experimental musician, he had one of those houses in the south of France built into a cliff face. He's, they, they pop up on National Geographic from time to time. And his listening room, he liked it because it had a room resonance of six hertz. <laughs> <laughs> it was basically a cliff. Yeah. Um, so it is possible to go to, to get it sort of outside of the threshold of, uh, of human. You yeah. just need to make some quite extraordinary sacrifices. I mean, it's it's such a huge um, subject. It's why we picked it to to stand on its own, and we're not doing it justice here. I mean, obviously, um, there there's so much to cover: uh, subwoofer design, what size of subwoofers. Mm. Oh God, uh, powered, I mean, design unpowered. Do you remember um, in the good old days some of the um, some of the, the 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 length of threads on opposed drivers, downward firing drivers, forward firing drivers, and yeah. honestly, uh, it's not since the Thirty Years' War um, over various religious uh, um, sort of um, uh, differences have I seen such fanatically entrenched views. I mean, just yeah. for the record, as far as I'm concerned, it were I doing at cutting out a. a, a, a dedicated home cinema purpose built there's almost no chance that the subwoofer i would choose would be anything other than counter firing drivers i just like the way they work because they are helping to solve their own that they, they are far easier to get working unobtrusively in a space so long as the drivers are in are in clear space which is a, a caveat i find that their natural ability to cancel themselves their, their own cabinet energy out is just priceless but many people yeah. vigorously disagree with me it's uh it's it's going to be a subject that we're going to come back to so don't panic if you're sitting there and you think well why have you mentioned this and why are you not talking about that and uh, why are we not talking about specific manufacturers and their designs and and so on it's because it is such a minefield um, <laughs> it's running right. and we are we, we are running late as well um we're trying to cram too much in but we uh, yeah we're we're going to come back to it because it is one of these areas that that a causes the most confusion and like ed says also causes some of the biggest arguments on the forums as well um because people do get entrenched um when it comes to base it's it's just one of those subjects that gets everybody passionate and uh, who doesn't like a bit of sub base that's one of the main things about this hobby is uh is finding those uh, base sweeps and uh, playing them over and over again and rattling the whole place. Uh, you just need to read some of the threads in the subwoofer forum. If you've never visited the subwoofer forum, it's a great place uh, to go and find out <laughs> all about all about subwoofers and um, you're looking fight. for an argument. <laughs> <laughs> Different points of view. But yes, it is really, really helpful. So head over to the subwoofer forum, ask your questions in there. People will help you out. Uh, it's a great community on AV forums. Uh, so do go over there and ask your questions. Like I said, we'll come back uh, and cover this subject um, 
in a little bit more depth because there are do's and don'ts and we'll grab some industry people in as well and get them uh, especially people who design rooms and we'll try and get people uh, involved um, in that as well so you can give me some ideas in terms of designing your room and where to place the subwoofer because it is the biggest headache out of all the speakers it's the biggest headache and right. do you use it do you use it with music there's another subject that could last a, a good few <laughs> hours so we'll uh, we'll skip around that one over, over um, to you ed and we'll we'll come <laughs> back to that. that i just like the fact some of sj i like cylinder subwoofers i have three and list list them um my cats love cylinder subwoofers um it's from the first <laughs> times i had to profusely apologize to a manufacturer for just what the cat had done to it um so yeah uh, that's something to bear in mind but yeah yeah absolutely so we'll, we'll come back to this subject um and before we move on to software uh, Alistair Cox, thank you very much. He's donated 899 through the Super Chat. And he says, I send these once a month because I think you guys deserve more than the £3 Patreon payment. Uh, thanks, as always, for all your hard work. Well, thank you very much, Alistair. It is appreciated. Thank, thank you for you your support. Sir. And, uh, yeah, hopefully uh, we do you proud again tonight uh, with some of the, the stuff. And, of course, if you have questions, uh, we're still around for the next uh, 10 to 20 minutes anyway to get through what we need to get through. So yeah. any important questions, uh, get them into the live chat. If you're listening a little bit later on to the recorded uh, version of the podcast, uh, then, of course, you can send your questions into podcast at eduforums.com on the email. Uh, that's if you still use email. Um, or use the socials. Uh, we're on Twitter. We're on Facebook and so on. Um when you are we opening our TikTok account? <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you like, Ed, you're you're quite welcome to open that one up. Right, so we're going to move on. We're going to talk about software, and that's coming next. If you enjoy the podcast on YouTube, then please like and subscribe. If you're listening to the audio version, then please leave us a rating on your podcast app. We invite you to email questions and feedback to podcast at avforums.com and join in with this episode's discussion thread in the podcasts forum at AV Forums. Right, so let's move on. Uh, album of the week, Ed. Yeah, not an absolutely vintage week uh, this time around. Uh, so my recommendation, because I haven't done an, an a piece of, you know, lively electronica in a little while, is uh, a very enigmatic French producer called NTO. Not a great deal is known about them. They've worked with a few artists. They don't generally release that much of their own stuff. So this thing lurched out of the blue. It's called apnea, uh, relating to the, um, the the breathing term, uh, you know, most known as sleep, sleep apnea. apnea. Yeah. yeah. Um, I quite like it. Uh, actually, do you know what? The more I listen to it, the more I I, I really quite like it. Um, it's it's um, a, a light. A, it's a well produced slick. It does everything that I want in a piece of French electronica. It does some interesting and moody sounds it's beautifully produced beautifully mastered um and i think it's a diverting way to pass an hour or so whether you then end up wanting to spend 22 pounds on the vinyl is entirely up to you i won't lie to you i almost certainly won't i have other things to buy um and uh nevertheless it's on all the major streaming services I have had it on and I've been enjoying it. I'm I'm aware that not everyone is a, a fully paid up electronics loon. So with that in mind, annoyingly, my computer restarted about five minutes before I went online for the podcast, just to uh, just to, to, to mess up all of my saved things. There is a band called The Record Company. Uh, and they released an album this week called Play Loud. So if you are more into people singing with guitars, uh, they are a big, healthy chunk of blues rock. So that's well worth a listen as well. Um, there are still some marquee releases left in this year. It's got some, it's got some, um, hopefully got some, some stings in the tail towards the end of it. But um, I, I don't know about you, Phil. I think as far as I'm concerned, it's been a quieter year. Than t I mean, 2020 had some great stuff in it. This has been a bit quieter all around. It has, me. it has a little bit, but the, the good stuff has been really, really good. Mm, um, no, there aren't, it, and, no, and no question there. There has been some good stuff. Uh, any plans to go uh, any more live music, Ed? Uh, you'd went down. Uh, yes. Um, I'm hopefully going to see a band that I have never, ever seen, despite being a big fan of them, because Eels are playing Camden Roundhouse in March, and assuming that society hasn't collapsed by then, <laughs> um, <laughs> I am fervently hoping that I will get to be able to do that. I've yet to sign off 
on childcare and things like that. So that's where most of the hopefully comes in rather than a genuine belief that society will implode. <laughs> um, so that's that's on the on the list. And I'm fervently hoping that my baby, who I wax lyrical about every couple of years when they release an album, they have got one in the pipe. So hopefully they're going to tour as well. And hopefully this time I can stave off either breaking my leg or getting divorced and actually go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so we'll see um, uh, Ch- churches are touring ed you... oh right okay i'll have a look see where they see where they're off to um, um steve did you say you were quite enjoying the public service broadcasting from uh, i was indeed yes bright, bright magic is that right bright magic. yes it is wasn't it um i, I loved playing spot the influence because yes thought, Ooh, bit of peter gabriel bit of genesis bit of craft work bit of marillion <laughs> bit of angelis at one point no, it's, uh, angelis, very, very yeah. good yeah very good album yeah. I, I've, it's been on high rotation here mm. as well uh, i secured tickets today for omd at the sage mm-hmm. in gateshead which is on the third of november so apologies to the movies team i uh, i won't be watching uh, the movies podcast that night i'll be going to hear omd i saw them um earlier this year at the 80s festival that i went to and they blew me away they were absolutely brilliant um so i've been trying to get tickets it's been a sold out uh show for a number of weeks now i've been phoning up every week just seeing if there's been any return tickets and lo and behold there was return tickets today so i snapped them up so going to go and see them on the 3rd of november uh really looking forward to that and then obviously the human league in december i'm going to go and see them as well so uh there might you still be other things. time machine from back to the future no no um. not yet <laughs> Uh, and and for my sins, I'm going to be trying to get tickets on Friday morning when they go uh, for sale for Brian Adams. Um, this summer tour, we're going to go, go and see him in Kelso, I think, uh, at Flores Castle, if we can. I think to it'll be, honest, be a spectacular venue. It's quite a lot of fun live. You yeah, know, I think it will be good. It's easy to get snippy value, about so. Brian Adams, but there are some very good sing-along sort of things going on there. So no, no, yeah, if you like that kind of thing, and like I say, I mean, it, it, he's doing a lot of outdoor shows later uh, in the summer. So the one I'm going to try and get to is is in Kelso, which is at uh, Flores Castle, which is stunning, absolutely stunning location. So and he's doing the uh, cricket ground at Durham as well. So if I can't get it to Kelso, I'll try and get the Durham tickets as well. But anyway. It's funny, I just noticed as an aside, obviously there's some of the information on the next record store day stuff covering on the on the rough trade site that um the apnea link was on, it would appear that there's going to be a thousand copies repressed of tricky blowback. If you buy that and stick it straight on a resale website, Gadget, I I will go Liam Neeson on you. <laughs> I will hunt you down and I will inflict whatever injury his, I can. His skills, he's got lots of skills. Well, right? I have no I have no skills other than just <laughs> significant rage. So we'll see how we go. I would love right. to secure a copy of that. So yeah. Great. Let's talk uh, vision side of things now. Uh, 4K discs. So, Steve, what have you been looking at? Well, um, the two discs I'm going to talk about, this is quite interesting because um, both of them are already available on Disney+. Plus. So I'm talking about Free Guy and Jungle Cruise. Now, uh, Free Guy, I knew was coming out last week. Jungle Cruise, I had no idea was coming out last week. It's so Disney are just dropping these discs without any fanfare whatsoever. And um, almost as an afterthought, I think, um, because I, I, as far as I was aware, Jungle Cruise is coming out and it is coming out in the States in, um, in November. And then uh, someone asked me about it last week and, and I said, well, I haven't got it. Of course, I haven't got it. It's not out until November. And he went, well, actually, it came out yesterday. Uh, and I was like, hey, and I had a look at Amazon. And I thought, oh, wow, you're right. So it's a bit weird stuff is getting released with um with literally no no marketing whatsoever just turning up on on 4k disc what i can say is that both free guy and jungle cruise are are cracking 4k discs with really great picture and fantastic atmos soundtracks um you know who a who doesn't want to see the rock take um emily Blunt up the amazon i i certainly enjoyed the film when i saw it at um Sorry, I got, we I got, honestly I got can't take you anywhere. Let's. Let, who wants to see The Rock take Emily Blunt and Jack Whitehall up the Amazon? <laughs> uh, to be precise, <laughs> um, I, I watched it um, uh, as a premium um, screening, you know, on, on Disney Plus, and uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Actually, uh, much to my surprise, but Steve, you would sit romp. there and watch The Rock read. The no, phone it's it's an old school romp. It's it's fun. Uh, and Free Guy, I re- i mean, I was quite surprised at some of the negative comments in the uh, in the review thread for this because uh, I I really really enjoyed Free Guy. I thought it was a cracking film um, with a you know 
certainly one of the few gaming related films that actually seems to be written by someone who's played a video game mm. uh and um and uh, uh, brian reynolds you know he's always fun uh and I mean, he's been playing the same role now for about the last 10 years but but he's always fun and i thought that uh, jody como uh, jody como was amazing have you seen her being interviewed in real life you've got this really thick scouts accent well, and yeah. you see it on you know like in, in free guy where she's doing she's playing an american but in the game her avatar's got an english accent so uh um it's it's she's a great actress and and she's really good at it and and uh yeah i, I really enjoyed both these films i think are great and they're really i did good thoroughly films. enjoy channing tatum in it as well that is amazing. he is fantastic I, where has he been for the last few years because i really like channing tatum and i, I think probably him spending all of the money he made on like gi joe and stuff <laughs> and just having a thoroughly wonderful time in fairness so you know <laughs> Yeah, he was really funny, and yeah, that so uh, I I thought Free Guy was great. I highly recommend it. I think it's a fantastic film. I really enjoyed it. Um, John Cruise, I also highly recommend. Both of them are excellent discs. Um, although, as I've just said at the beginning of this little piece, you can also watch them on Disney Plus. But you know, obviously, you get higher bandwidth. So, well, I, I, sorry, higher bit rate on a disc than you will on Disney Plus, um, and that does make a difference, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, so that's our discs, 4K discs, uh, for this week. Uh, so to wrap up tonight, we're going to uh, quickly find out what we've been watching and uh, what we're recommending. And one sticking out straight away there, Steve saw um, Squid Game. Uh, I heard the buzz. I saw Kazi's review, um, given it two episodes so far, and I can see why it's addictive. I, I'm assuming that you've seen the whole thing. I haven't, actually. I haven't okay. started. Uh, my plan was to watch it, or at least some of it, before we got to this podcast. But I haven't got round to it yet. All oh, right, I'm going okay, to well, definitely. But you, yeah. please, far away. Um, yeah, very much uh, the Korean South Korean version of Battle Royale, basically. Um, it's it, it's gory. Um, it puts everything up on screen. It is. I can see why it's been controversial, but I can also see why it's addictive. Um, I like I say, I watched two episodes the other night. Um, I watched the dubbed version, and I've since learned that. You really should watch the Korean language yeah. with the subtitles uh, because um, it's it's a lot better way to watch it. So I think I shall go from episode three onwards um, with the Korean soundtrack with the uh, with the subtitles. But I am enjoying it at the minute. It's uh, it, yeah, it's one that you think about afterwards as well and want to get back to. So um, yeah, recommended from me so far on two episodes. Uh, the, most, right. big, the biggest controversy about Squid Game, isn't it? That they, at one point they've changed it now. Apparently, there was a number, a telephone number in the show, and it was a real number. And some people right. been getting bombarded <laughs> with phone calls <laughs> from all over the world. Uh, that'll, that'll have been changed, but yeah, it's and I think it's now uh, Netflix's highest ranking. Yeah, it's um, beaten Bridgerton as their biggest right. rated show, and this is actually a Netflix show too. It's not they bought in a Korean show. No. It was made, funded by Netflix, um, obviously made in South Korea, but made yeah. by Netflix, and then they've moved it on to the rest of their... It's world interesting, world. though. There's two, two, there were two points raised on social media. Now, I, 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 none of these are spoilers, and I haven't seen it yet. It, I've been, been uh, occupied with other things. The first is that um, uh, it sort of, once again, queries the wisdom of the Netflix movies, because this has indisputably created more buzz than any of the Netflix films I can remember being released uh, on social media. Yeah. The second is, uh, and someone asked, and this just never occurred to me, obviously Netflix still drops seasons, um, which is, you know, it's great in its own way. But when you think about the, the slow burn release week by week that most other streaming services are going for which maintains the buzz in the ted lassos the american gods the the boys so on and so forth that does so far more effectively than just delivering all of the episodes at once mm. are they hamstringing themselves in I, terms I, of I i don't know it seems to work for them for some strange reason because like you say i mean other services like disney plus um they will do two episodes uh, at, at the season beginning and then one episode a week and that that tends to work but what happens with with that approach is i tend to watch the first one see if it's any good uh, and then i'll wait for everything else to drop and then in netflix it, it anyway and then yeah. netflix it that way so um so yeah it's, it's it's remembering every week to go back and pick up the new episode i, I like so. the weekly drop i i'm as i've mentioned i have to I'm agree watching and thoroughly enjoying i've 
I highly recommend it on Disney Plus. Only Murders in the Building. Um, it's on tonight. It drops on a, a Wednesday, and every Wednesday I look forward. You know, it's like a you know a little treat every Wednesday night. My episode of Only Murders in the Building. You know, like a comfy well, person. It's like serialized television audience. used to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I know, but I mean, uh, you forget. Yes. The no, I, I agree. In looking forward to something each week, as opposed to just binging away through it in, in two days or even an evening, depending on how long the series is. And then that horrible feeling of emptiness where you think, oh, God, I've watched it all now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I, I mean, there, it, it, it's kind of... But I was, I was talking with um, uh, Ed about this before the podcast started, but we've both been watching Foundation, which is on Apple TV. Yes. Now they drop the first two episodes. This is what they quite often do. They'll drop two episodes and then after that it's weekly. And what I've noticed, and this is not just Apple, but I've noticed what's what's quite common now is that they spend all the money on those first two episodes. Because <laughs> Foundation's first two episodes, you think it looks epic. And you're yeah. thinking, blimey, they spent some money on this show. The next two episodes have largely been people wandering around Iceland. And <laughs> Whilst the is, is that, is that Iceland the, the, the country the shop. or the, or the, <laughs> shop, right. the mm-hmm. country? I mean, don't get me wrong. Production value is still top draw. The effects are excellent. It looks fantastic. But it doesn't look anywhere near as expensive as those first two episodes. No, now, it's true. Partly it might be story, but you, I get the impression what they quite often do is they'll do like spend a lot of money on the first two episodes and spend a lot of money on the last two episodes. And in the middle bit, you know, you kind of you, that's where you save the cash. Um, yeah. But uh but I, I, I enjoy the weekly drop and I'm very happy that things are, are being dropped weekly because A, it does mean you can spread stuff out because if you really get into a show and you start binging it, suddenly, you know, you realise you've lost three days and haven't done anything. <laughs> and for that, yeah, for those of us with, you know, sort of commitments to periodically producing work recognisably in the month, I tell Phil it's going to turn up in <laughs> give or take. Um, yeah, I, I simply can't do that. So I am, I am yeah. grateful for the weekly drop. Um, I just, as I say, my... I'd be interested to see if Netflix stick to their guns on this one, because for me, all signs point to there being great attractive force from the weekly drop. Uh, if I mean, let's face it, if you'd had a couple of people getting, if they'd done two episodes of Squid Game and now where people were hanging on in, waiting for more of it, I honestly think social media would be on fire. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, I, um, I think that, that is the advantage of the weekly drop, is you're creating the water cooler chat yeah on social media but, but then again but then again you know squid game has had that huge momentum has been word of mouth um uh, from people who have sat and, and binged the whole thing and then like you say told people at work and they've gone on to it and then social media and everything else because i certainly had missed the initial um buzz about it and it's only recently i think kaz also caught on to it and, and did the review and it'd been out it's been out a little while now so yeah, it's it's a oh, there's pros and cons definitely yeah. for the young. But I am, I'm, 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 I'm pleased say the, that the pro. Go on, go sorry, on, Steve, go you go. No, I was going to say that there is one big pro to the dropping it all in one hit, which is that it means someone can can watch the whole thing and say yes, it's worth watching. Because what I hate more than anything else is a show that starts well and then rapidly goes downhill and ends up being crap by the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> you, yeah, you want you want to you want to know if it's worth. The time yeah. that you invest. Is it worth eight you? hours of my time being invested in this? Is it going to be bollocks? Or what I really hate is when it's it ends on a cliffhanger and you're like, oh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> I've got to wait well, for the next Yeah, season. but that's an occupational <laughs> hazard, isn't it? I mean, obviously, there are cliffhangers because that's how you come back for more of it. So they want you to come back for the next but season. But nevertheless, I am pleased that Netflix has done a sh- had a surefire, you know, clean three pointer on this one because let's face it, a lot of the mate, a lot of their content over 2021 has been variable so you know <laughs> I'm, I'm quite pleased that this one has, has, has hit the spot i'm also delighted as an aside that they now i believe own the rights globally for the animated version of cowboy bebop which will hopefully now take up residence there permanently um ignore the balance the the, the divide between sci-fi uh, sorry animation and live action and um you know, J- Japanese and, and Europeans and so forth. Just as a as a realised science fiction universe, it's still jaw droppingly wonderful. Um, okay, I adore that. So yeah. Uh, so, I, like I say, Squid Game. I've been watching that uh, strictly. 
been watching that as well. Okay, I'm, I'm actually getting no, into no, it. No, we, we had and, a few uh, sessions. Watching weeks. Strictly, going to musicals. Are you going to come out of the closet anytime soon? <laughs> what have you done with the real Phil Hinton? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, and Bake Off, are you watching Bake Off, Ed? You I have been watching that. Bake Off. Yeah, what um, do you think? Uh... Thus far, other than that German gentleman who's actually a character, actually the German, it, I think it's going to be Germany versus Italy in the final. Yeah, it looks like, like, like it, a major it? football tournament. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, they, they, they I, you know, it, it, it's comfort television. I, I you know, my, there's at least one person still in it that I won't be able to visualize in any way, shape, or form. But I will be watching it once we finish this podcast because I right. enjoy it. Yeah. Um, just something as an aside, something I uh, may, maybe I'm very slow on the uptake. I didn't realize that iPlayer now has every episode of top gear since the live format yes it, it dropped i think it was about three or four weeks ago that um it? now obviously a lot of them are you know it serves to remind you that you know you, we we it's like so many programs you remember the great moments and there were large periods of not great moments but nevertheless in some of the episodes which have dropped out of serialization even on dave there are still some sensational moments. Um, so if you are bored, if you need to kill 20 minutes, some of them, there's still some great bits and bobs lying around there. Yeah. Um, I'm still enjoying Taskmaster as well on um, on Channel 4. As an aside, I still think that's a magnificent piece of comedy. Your opinions may vary. I, um, I well, I'm gonna, I've been saying it for a while, but I'm going to keep saying it. Ted Lasso, Apple TV is an awesome. I, I'm going to, I'm going to start that, Steve. I'm going to. It ended, it ended last Friday. Second season, sorry, ended last Friday. On, and uh, it set things up beautifully for the third and I believe final season. Um, it's, 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 a, it's a fantastic show. It's laugh out loud funny, but it also makes you feel good, which is sort of something that's quite nice to have these days. Mm. Um, and like as I said. Only murders, only murders in the building. If you've got Disney Plus, check it out. It's it's absolutely. So I mean, I haven't seen Steve Martin in anything in thirty years, um, and he he created this series and wrote it. So um, as well as stars in it, along with Martin Short and Selena Gomez, and it's a great show. It's a great fun series. Um, so that's worth checking out. And I did watch Midnight Mass, which is another new thing on um, on Netflix by Mike Flanagan, who made The Haunting of Hill House and The Haunting of Bly Manor. As well as Doctor Sleep, the film of a, the sequel to The Shining. Uh, interesting. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to take too much because I don't want to give too much away. But um, yeah, it's it's an interesting take on both the horror genre and religion, and um, and uh, some good performances in that. And it looks awesome. I mean, one thing I'll say for Netflix shows that I mean you know, they always look great, even if they're crap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they, they set high standard for production these days, don't you? Can you can only go into production if you hit certain uh, things that they stipulate that you must have. So uh, at least the quality is always high enough. So I think that's everything that we've been watching and recommending. Uh, if there's anything that you want to recommend uh, that people check out, so then don't forget you can add it to the thread uh, in the podcast forum. That is on Navy Forum. So if you've got the forum list, go right down the bottom of the page and you'll find the podcast forum. Go in there and you'll find this episode. You can add your thoughts, uh, feedback, and everything else to the thread on Navy Forum. So that's it for this week. Uh, podcast competition ed why don't you do the podcast oh, competition hang on a second all right easy tiger uh all the way i down. was prepared and you weren't for that one. no well there you go right <laughs> to win a copy of the lost boys on blu-ray just use the following question to select the correct answer from the competitions page which of these lost boys actors starred in the tv series 24 <laughs> <laughs> and if you have been awakening from a near 30 year coma now you have my sympathies on that one so uh, yeah um, <laughs> Look yeah. it up. I'd the love answers. it if there was a trip question in one of the Lost Boys actors that you're not thinking of actually also appears. Uh, I think <laughs> Kaz will Kaz will rotate through into trick questions when he feels like it. But for the moment, Kaz is is doing doing yeah. straight straight and narrow sort of questioning yeah. so yeah excellent uh so once again uh, thank you for the donations that came in uh, this evening uh, thank you very much for those and uh, thank you very much for your questions if we haven't answered them then stick them in the thread if we've got time during the week we will uh, jump in and answer them as well and there have been very many que or any really questions uh, been, no uh, it's been it's been, been a little tonight. bit quiet it's been a little bit quiet, but if you're listening a little bit later in the week, then of course, uh, why don't you stick your questions? You can Fine. do that on YouTube or like say, head over to the forums, uh, podcast forum and stick them in there. Uh, but that's it for this week. My thanks to Ed Selly. I am exhausted from living up to your expectations. And Steve Withers. Your mother is a fragging aardvark. 
Uh, if you enjoyed the podcast, then please give us a like and also consider subscribing to the channel. And if you do, then hit the notification bell and it will inform you every time we upload new video content. Of course, you can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, you can bookmark avforums.com for latest reviews, news and videos. And of course, if you're listening on a podcast provider and they allow you to leave us a rating, then please leave us the highest rating possible. It would really be appreciated. I'm Phil Hinton. Thank you very much for watching and listening tonight. And don't forget, you can join us next week for the Movies Podcast.